there's a layer of liquid all around the outside, uh -huh. in between the inner globe and the outer globe. So that it's a nice barren, you see. Yeah. But it's moving. Yeah. Now, I received this in the mail on the same day that Martin Gardner got one in the mail, with no letter, nothing ex explaining what it was all about or anything. It was just free. The FedEx man came to the door in a big styrofoam box like that and gave it to me. I unpacked it and I set it up. I thought, who did this? Who sent this to me? So I looked at the bottom of the globe and it said Movo, M-O-V-O. So I looked them up on the internet. I found out where the company was and I called. I, I called Martin on the phone first of all and he said, yes, I got one of those. He said, they're wonderful. And it turns constantly. I said, yeah. I said, who sent it to you? He said, I don't know. And I said, I don't know either. I'm going to find out. So I called the company and they put me in touch with the president of the company. And he laughed on the phone. He said, I didn't know whether Martin Gardner would call me first or you would. And I said, well, he's calling you too because I'm calling on his behalf. I said, what is this thing? Well, he explained it to me. Now, I had already partly figured it out. It's powered by light. It's, there are a ring of photoelectric cells all around the top here, okay? Uh -huh. And I figured that much out because when I turned up the lights, it stopped. So that figured, all right? Now, what happens is there's a computer chip connected to the, the power source, which is the, the photocells. And um, around the base, uh, the, the equator, pardon me here, there are a number of longitud longitudinal, longitudinal, I'll, I can say it, I know they can, coils arranged like bicycle spokes. Now, what the computer chip does is at random, it chooses any one of those and puts all the photoelectric electricity into it which turns it into a compass. You see, which tries to turn, now that's south, this is north, it tries to turn north and south. But as soon as it goes 30 degrees, the computer automatically switches to the next clockwise one. And so it's a frustrated compass. It's always trying to turn, and it gets stopped each time, you see, as it starts to turn. That makes it into a motor. It's interesting, is it yeah, not? It sure is. Beautiful little thing. This is the, uh, this is, uh, there are four versions of it, I believe. This is the NASA photographs. It's made from NASA photographs of the Earth from various times and seasons and whatnot. And uh, so that's the one I chose. I, I would have chosen, pardon me, had I had a choice of it. But he, uh, the inventor, uh, told me that he was very pleased that we were pleased with it. And he said he chose it because it was the most scientific one. Well, this might be something that Norm Edmund has never seen. And that would be interesting to know because there isn't much that Norman but has oh, already seen. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is just a copper pipe, all right? Yeah. And this is a ball bearing. I'm going to drop it in there. Watch. Really? Now, how does it do that? Yeah. Stand up, if you would be so kind. <laughs> Thank you. Now. We'll I want you to take the ball, stand over here, please. Holding this just a little bit above the rug, and I want you to look down the tube and watch what happens to it as it goes down the tube. Hold it a little bit higher so you can see all the way through there, okay? It floats down. Now it'll come up the end in a second, and here it goes, and pshum, there it is. But you see it levitating down the tube. The reason is this is actually a very strong magnet, uh, a neodymium magnet that is copper plated, or uh, nickel plated, pardon me, <laughs> and this is a conductor. Now, when you pass a magnet by a conductor, that induces a magnetic field, uh -huh. right? It induces a magnetic field of the opposite polarity, uh -huh. and so that is being supported on a magnetic field as it goes down here, and it only touches the side occasionally, and that resists there. Hmm. Isn't that an interesting yeah. phenomenon, though? Now I'll show you one that'll that'll double the effect here. Well, I got I get a smaller ball here. Now you know this is a magnet now, but this is a much smaller one. But uh, watch this effect now. Now a German um, scientist a few years back in in Wuppertal, Alberta, as a matter of fact, showed me this. This is is a quite an interesting experiment. This is a magnet that, you see, I marked a black mark there on one of the poles. Watch what happens now. You see it going ka-chung, ka-chung, yeah. ka-chung, ka-chung. It's not going smoothly. Right. What do you think the reason is? Right. Now, I, I couldn't figure this out. 
since this is south and this is north. As it turns over, its north and south poles are turning over, you see, but it's resisting it. It's resisting turning because it's resisting the magnetic field of the Earth. Uh -huh. If I do it at a greater elevation like this, it goes down relatively smoothly, but still a little bit jerky. And when I do it like this, you see the distinct mm -hmm. motion like that? Mm -hmm. Now, this is the one that really puzzled me. Watch it. Now, very smoothly. Mm -hmm. You see it doesn't jerk at all? <laughs> because it's going east and west. It's not opposing the north and south poles, you see. It's just going east and west and it doesn't care. But it does spin along with this north pole on one side and the south pole on the other side, mm -hmm. attracted to the magnetic poles of the Earth. But I show this to kids and it really gets them thinking. Mm -hmm. See, it's very smooth when it goes this way. And the marvelous thing is when you take this, you do this with it, it goes away and it ends up in this hand again. <laughs> That's astonishing. That <laughs> even has me surprised. Yeah. I don't know how that works. I have no idea whatsoever. Try to separate the magnetic disks. Up. I'm going to try very hard to, to do that. Just getting them apart is so difficult. No, my hands are not very strong now. I just can't do it. But they're hold, held together so tightly, I can't even get one of them off. Mm. Ah, there, I got one of them off. Okay? But it's, they're held on, and I've got to bring them together slowly because they're such strong magnets they will break. They will mm. actually shatter because they're very brittle. And I put in. Oh, gotta be careful not to pinch my hands. Ha! Did it again. He's easy. He's really easy. <laughs> the, the technology, Norm, is going at it such yeah. a rate. It's yeah. really hard to keep up. Right? Yeah, you can't keep up to it. Oh, wait a minute. I'll show you. I, oh, maybe I don't have it on this phone. Let me see if I do. Um, this is the iPhone. I don't remember whether I put that program on it or not. Let me find out. Uh, no, I'm not seeing it. No. No, I think maybe I don't have it here. No, I don't have it on this uh, question phone. But there's a program in here. You just press a button on it, and you hum or whistle any tune into it. And it, it a little thing turns around on it. Suddenly it comes up with the name of the tune or the symphony or whatever. You know, you can go da 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 Beethoven's fifth. And it'll show Beethoven's fifth, first movement. It gives you, oh, and another thing too, on books like this, um, just a regular book like this, any old book that you pick up, there'll be a barcode on it uh, someplace or other. I don't see one on here. It'll be in here someplace. No, I don't see one on that. But maybe There's the hardcover, I'm sure, will have it. Let's find out. They have a bar, yeah, there's a barcode on here. Yeah. Now, and there's one in here, too. That barcode, if you hold the iPhone, if you've got the right program in there, up to that, you press a button on it, and it will, it'll show the name of the author, the publisher, the date of publication, number of pages, all that information shows up immediately. And on a product, if you hold any product up to it, uh, you know, something that you bought. I don't know, there's no barcode on this router. Well, there is. There's a card code right there. If you play the, it, it'll say the router, the name of the manufacturer, Helix Company and such, it'll give you all that information about it. Right on your telephone. Now, I, I remember a time, you may remember the time too, in the long distant past, when you bought a telephone in order to make telephone calls. That's been forgotten now, because people say, I can also make phone calls with this. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, didn't mean to offend you. But uh, it, it's astonishing what you can get into a phone. Come on. This is getting ridiculous. You can play games with it, you can play everything but pole yeah. with it, I think. Too complicated for me. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. It, it's gone beyond me now. Yeah. And we should just relax and enjoy what we can get. Right. I still use Q-tips and a few things. On Q-tips I can understand. That's not too difficult for me to grasp, you see. But some of the computer angles, I just can't get to that at all. But Q-tips, oh yeah, I've mastered Q-tips. But anyway, the, all the books that you see lined up on the floor here, right up to this point here, are all books that I have written in different uh, languages. I've got oh, 11 yeah. different languages. That's great. Congratulations on that. Uh, this, for example, this is in Chinese. 
And this is what book? I don't even know what book it is because I can't read the Chinese. I have to look for the illustrations. Psychic Investigator. Is it? Yep. So it is. You're absolutely right. Good for you. I, I knows. <laughs> knows about these things. Yeah. yeah, but I, and I'm looking for a special shelf to put these on. We haven't got room for it now. I've got room for my books. I can't write any more books because we can't store them. <laughs> but, <Right>. um... <coughs> you better keep writing. We need them. Oh, yes. I've got one coming out called A Magician in the Laboratory. Oh. And I'm working on it right now, and it's going to be quite a big book. I've got 27 chapters, I think, now planned wow. in it. And I'm working on that. For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org. There's a layer of liquid all around the outside, uh -huh. in between the inner globe and the outer globe. So that it's a nice barren, you see. Yeah. But it's moving. Yeah. Now, I received this in the mail on the same day that Martin Gardner got one in the mail, with no letter, nothing ex explaining what it was all about or anything. It was just free. The FedEx man came to his behalf. <laughs> I said, what is this thing? Well, he explained it to me. Now, I had already partly figured it out. It's powered by light. Is there a ring of photoelectric cells all around the top here, okay? Uh -huh. And I figured that much out because when I turned up the lights, it stopped. So that figured, all right? Now, what happens is there's a computer chip connected to the, the power source, which is the, the photo cells. And um, around the base, uh, the, the equator, pardon me here, there are a number of longitud longitudinal, longitudinal, I'll, I can say it, I know they can, coils, arranged like bicycle spokes. They're in a big styrofoam box like that and gave it to me. I unpacked it and I set it up. I thought, who did this? Who sent this to me? So I looked at the bottom of the globe and it said Movo, M-O-V-O. So I looked them up on the internet. I found out where the company was and I called. And I, I called Martin on the phone first of all and he said, yes, I got one of those. He said, they're wonderful. And it turns constantly. I said, yeah. I said, who sent it to you? He said, I don't know. I said, I don't know either, I'm going to find out. So I called the company, and they put me in touch with the president of the company. And he laughed on the phone. He said, I didn't know whether Martin Gardner would call me first or you would. And I said, well, he's calling you too because I'm calling on him.